So on the topic of mutations, somatic mutations are different from germ germline mutations because somatic mutations occur in non-reproductive cells and creates a clone of cells that have the mutant gene. But germline mutations occur in cells that give rise to gametes, which um, produces offspring that may or may not have the mutation. So be familiar with gene mutation versus chromosomal mutations. When there is no mutation, the wild-type protein is produced and all is well in the world. But there are some pheno phenotypic effects on, of mutations. For example, there is something called the missense mutation in which um, the new codon encodes a different amino acid and there is a change in the amino acid sequence. Then there's the nonsense mutation in which the new codon is a stop codon. There's a premature termination of translation and the mRNA will be shorter than usual. Then there's the silent mutation in which the new codon encodes the same amino acid and there is no change in amino acid sequence. Now this is different from neutral mutation because it alters the amino acid sequence of the protein, but it doesn't actually significantly change the function. There are so many different types of mutations, like the loss of function, gain of function mutations, lethal, um, suppressor, forward, reverse, all of these things that we haven't talked about, but it's in this chart, so be sure to review it. We will focus on suppressor, suppressor mutations, which is a genetic change that hides or suppresses the effect of another mutation. Um, an intragenic suppressor mutation occurs in the gene containing the mutation being suppressed. So a missense mutation alters a single, single codon, and then um, a second mutation at a different site in the same gene may restore the original amino acid. This is different from a reverse mutation because it occurs at a different site from that of the original mutation but still produces the wild-type phenotype. Base substitutions include transition and transversion. Transition is a substitution of a purine for a purine or a pyrimidine for a pyrimidine. Remember that purines have two rings and consist of A and G, and pyrimidines have one ring consisting of C and T. Now, transversions, on the other hand, is a substitution of a pyrimidine for a purine or of a purine for a pyrimidine. While base substitutions are pretty common, base insertions and deletions are maybe even more common. They change the reading frame of the sequence. Mutations in which the number of copies of a set of nucleotides increases are called expanding nucleotide repeats. So a DNA molecule has a lot of copies of the same repeat. The two tan strands separate and replicate. In the course of replication, an, a hairpin forms on the newly synthesized strand, causing part of the template strand to be replicated twice and increasing the number of repeats on the newly synthesized strand. The two strands of the new DNA molecule separate, and the strand with the extra copies serve as a template, making it bigger and bigger, and f results in anticipation. Mutations can arise from spontaneous chemical changes. These are natural changes that occur. These changes can occur from depurination, strand slippage, or unequal crossing over. <coughs> depurination is the loss of a purine base from a nucleotide that results from the covalent bond connecting the purine to the one prime carbon atom of deoxyribosugar breaks, which produces an apurinic site. <coughs> This apurinic site cannot provide a template for a complementary base on the newly synthesized strand. So a nucleotide with 
an incorrect base, usually A, is incorporated into the newly synthesized strand. At the next round of replication, this incorrectly incorporated base will be used as a template, which will lead to a permanent mutation. A, newly, a nucleotide is incorporated into the newly um, synthesized strand opposite the apyrinic site for the other strand. Insertions and deletions may result from strand slippage. When a newly synthesized strand loops out, resulting in the addition of one nucleotide on the new strand. On the other hand, a template strand can loop out and connect or result in the omission of one nucleotide on the new strand. Unequal crossing over also produces insertions and deletions. So if homologous chromosomes misalign during crossing over, one crossover product contains an insertion and the other will contain a deletion which will result in a mutation. Besides spontaneous chemical changes, chemically induced mutations can also occur. A, mu a mutagen is any environmental agent that significantly increases the rate of mutation above the spontaneous rate. This can occur with mispairing during replication with EMS and mustard gas. Another thing that can also happen is intercalating agents. So base analogs are chemicals with structures similar to that of any four of the standard bases of DNA. One example is 5-bromouracil, which resembles thymine, except it has a bromine atom in place of the methyl group. So it can actually lead to a replicated error. In replication, 5-bromouracil may become incorporated into DNA in place of thymine, which produces an incorporated error. The strands separate, and 5-bromouracil may mispair with guanine in the next round of replication. Since thymine slash 5-bromouracil normally pairs with adenine, it can be ionized and pair with guanine through wobble. The strands separate once again, and in the next replication, this guanine nucleotide pairs with cytosine, leading to a permanent mutation. And if 5-bromouracil pairs with adenine, no replicated errors actually occur. Now, intercalating agents insert themselves between adjacent bases in DNA, which distort the 3D structure of the helix, causing insertions and deletions in replication, which can lead to severe frameshift mutations. UV radiation produces pyrimidine dimers consisting of mostly thymine bases. These dimers distort the configuration of DNA and often block re um, replication. Ionizing radiation that happens in X-rays and gamma rays and cosmic rays are higher energy and also penetrate tissues to damage the DNA. Transposable elements can insert themselves into other genes and disrupt the function, which is why it is um, mutagenic. One example can be seen um, of transposable elements in the color of grapes, coming in black, red, and white varieties. So in black grapes, a specific gene regulates the synthesis of anthocyanine pigments. Um, but in white grapes, a retrotransposon has inserted near that same gene and disrupts the synthesis of anthocyanines. And in red grapes, a second mutation has removed most of the retrotransposome, but a piece is left behind and anthocyanine production is partly restored. In the 1940s, Barbara McClintock discovered um, transposition elements in cor corn kernels um, by the moving genes. So a corn kernel with genotype little c, little c has no transposition. 
it just produces a colorless or yellow kernel. But cells with the genotype big C little c result in the pigmented purple kernel. But an element AC produces transposase, which stimulates transposition of a DS element into the big C allele and disrupts its pigment producing function, which results in cells that have genotypes of um, big C, little c, subscript T, and are colorless. An element AC produces transposase once again and stimulates further transposition of the DS element, which hops out. It leaves the big C allele restoring the allele's function. A cell in which DS has transposed out of the C allele will produce pigment, generating spots of color in a likewise colorless kernel. Early transposition has big blotches of purple, while late transposition has little spots of purple. Now let's focus on DNA repair mechanisms. One is the mismatch repair mechanism in which mismatch bases distort DNA structure and the distorted section is cut out and replaced. So methylation of the GATC sequence allows old and new nucleotide strands to be differentiated. Um, a mismatch base was added to the new strand as seen, and methylation at GATC sequences allows old and new newly synthesized nucleotide strands to be differentiated. A lag in methylation means that immediately after replication, the old strand will be methylated, but the new strand will not. So the mismatch repair complex brings the mismatch um, bases close to the methylated GATC sequence and the new strand is identified. Then exonucleases remove nucleotides on the new strand between the GATC sequence and the mismatch. And finally, DNA polymerase then replaces the nucleotides, correcting the mismatch, and DNA ligase seals the nick in the sugar phosphate backbone. Many incorrectly inserted nucleotides that escape proofreading are corrected this way by mi mismatch repair, that is. Another repair mechanism is direct repair that converts altered bases back to its original um, structure. This happens in the photoreactivation of UV-induced pyrimidine dimers. Um, where some eukaryotes possess an enzyme called photolyase, which uses energy captured from light to break the covalent bonds that link the pyrimidines in a dimer. Another example is drawn here of O6-methylguanine um, losing its methyl group with methyl transferase and going back to its original guanine structure. There are some genetic diseases associated with defective repair. Many characteristics are affected and it's often associated with increased um, incidence of cancer. Um, one disease is exoderma pigmentosum, um, where there is abnormal skin pigmentation from sensitivity to sunlight. The defect in repair system does not allow for pyrimidine dimers to be repaired and results in freckle-like spots on the skin and a predis predisposition to skin cancer. Um, something else is Werner syndrome. It's a rare autosomal recessive premature aging disorder, um, which is caused by defect in homologous recombination.